Hey everybody, it is GleeCon back at you with the next episode of the Lore of Warcraft as we continue chapter two of the first volume of Chronicle. And things have recently gotten interesting. The world is as we see it here. We have ordered Azeroth. Um, the Pantheon's left. And we recently, in the last episode, had some things happening up here at Wormrest Temple. Um, the dragon Galakron, uh, necrotic dragon, he came and he was kind of ravaging the world. He wanted to eat everything. All these undead abominations came around him. And the five good proto-dragons uh, got together. Um, a lot of them are people who we recognize from down the rest, and, and we know them here because here at the Wormrest Temple, that's where they still reside, and uh, Galakron's bones are all over the place. Um, here we have, obviously, what is Northrend, and it's in the same basic shape because up here is Ulduar, Storm Peaks, that's where Yog saron is imprisoned. Out there is Shildazar Basin. Um, Wormrest Temple is kind of near the center south of what is Northrend in Dragonblight. Um, and then we have a couple little regions. So this kind of carved out right here. Over here, for the most part, this is going to become the Eastern Kingdoms, or at least like maybe around here, because that's Uldaman right there. And Uldaman is, I want to say like around Badlands. Um, so that's almost as far as it goes. We have the Dark Portal that will eventually come around here. Uh, Nazoth is, that's, this is eventually what will get broken off and become the Broken Isles, Kul Tiris and all that stuff. Uh, the Well of Eternity, this is where the Rift will eventually form. I, I mentioned on a previous episode, I don't know if the world it's has had been split. Obviously it hasn't, it's still Pangea. We just sort of have like a, a belly button for the Well of Eternity. Um, this will break off and become Pandaria, the Veil of Eternal Blossoms. That's also where Isharg, um, the vault of Isharg is Isharg. Isharg was dead, but I guess that's where his vault is. Um, we have Uldum over here, which is in the Tenaris. Oh, uh, no, actually, that's in the Uldu Ulduar region. Or maybe it's just called Uldum. Ah, there's so many. No, there's Ulduar up there. Yeah, so that's just the region of Uldum um, and neighboring Ankaraj Ungoro crater. This is Kalimdor over here. <clears throat> That's where Cthulhu is imprisoned. I don't hide you up there. So it's pretty, you can pretty much straight see where everything came from. This episode is called The Charge of the Dragon Flights. And we're going to, I'm guessing, talk more about how those five main good proto drakes uh, get Wormrest Temple going. Or who knows? Let's see. While Tyr and the proto dragons were battling Galakron, the other keepers finally emerged from their stupor. Too late, they realized the threat that the corrupted monstrosity posed. They were heartened by the resolve of Tyr's winged allies and ashamed of their own apathy. Tyr, however, never chastised the other keepers. Instead, he convinced them to imbue the five proto-dragons with powers so that they could safeguard the lands of Azeroth. There we go. Only Keeper Odin challenged this idea. Though he acknowledged the proto-dragon's proto heroism, he did not agree that Azeroth's fate should be placed on their shoulders. Odin saw Alex Strassa and her ilk as primitive life forms. Only the mighty Titan Forged could be trusted to protect the world. Odin argued that as Prime Designate, he had the final decision on how to proceed. Yet Tyr and the other keepers disagreed. Through bravery and self sacrifice, the proto dragons had earned the right to act as Azeroth's guardians. Despite Odin's continued protests, the other keepers moved forward with their plans. After the proto dragons defeated Galakron, the keepers journeyed to the frozen tundra where the final battle had taken place. Even Ra traveled from the distant south to take part in the great ceremony that was to come. Acting as conduits of their creator's powers, the gathered keepers bestowed the blessings of the pantheon upon each proto-dragon. High Keeper Ra channeled the powers of his creator, Amon Thul, into the proto-dragon Nosdormu. Of all Amon Thul's myriad powers, Nosdormu was blessed with a mastery of time itself. Henceforth, Nosdormo became known as the Timeless One, and he held dominion over the interweaving pathways of fate and destiny. There we go. The nurturing and ever-merciful Freya called upon her creator, Anar, to empower the proto-dragon Alexstrasza. 
Known thereafter as the Life Binder, Alex Strasse would devote everything she was to the stewardship of the living world. Having proved her courage and compassion in the battles against Galacron, she was crowned the Dragon Queen and given command over her kind. Freya also beseeched Eonor to bless Alex Strasse's younger sister, the proto-dragon Isera, with nature's influence. Isera was charged with keeping watch over the flowering wilds of Azeroth from within the Eternal Dream. Bound to this ethereal realm, she descended into an endless trance and became known thereafter as the Dreamer. Keeper Loken called on his creator, Norganon, to endow the proto-dragon Malagos with incredible arcane powers. Henceforth, Malagos would be known as the Spellweaver. The limitless realms of magic and hidden arcana would be his to share, explore, and protect. Lastly, Keeper Arcadis asked his cre creator, Kazgaroth, to bestow some of his vast powers upon the indomitable proto-dragon Neltharion. Known afterward as the Earth Warder, Neltharion was given charge over the mountains and deep caverns of the Earth. He embodied the strength of the world and served for many long ages as Alexstrasza's greatest friend and confidant. Bristling with the Pantheon's energies, the five proto-dragons transformed into immense and graceful creatures. Nosdormu's hide took on a bronze hue, like a sea of shimmering golden sand. Alexstrasza's scales turned a deep and vivid shade of red. Isera's life form became a vibrant green to reflect her new connection with nature. Malagos turned an icy blue color, and his very scales radiated potent arcane energies. Neltharion's rough hide became an earthy black. From that day forward, these five extraordinary beings would become known as the Dragon Aspects. The Keepers also sought to create a new species to help the Dragon Aspects protect the world. These beings would serve the Aspects as consorts and allies. To this end, the Keepers magically altered hundreds of proto-dragon eggs. From them would emerge creatures born in the image of the Aspects. This new race, known as Dragons, would form five distinct flights. Bronze, Red, Green, Blue, and Black. Though each of these flights would serve a different dragon aspect, they would all be bound by their duty to protect Azeroth. To strengthen this bond, the Keepers forged a grand tower in northern Kalimdor called Wormrest Temple. It would serve as the heart of the dragon's culture, a sanctuary where they could gather and discuss their activities, but above all, Wormrest would stand as a symbol of their unity. The Keepers, satisfied with their work, disappeared back into their lairs, leaving the aspects to watch over the living creatures of Azeroth. So we have another layer removed, so we have the ultimate pantheon, then we have the Keepers, and now even the Keepers themselves, like the demigods, have stepped back, and now you have the um, the dragon aspects that really have been protecting Azeroth ever since, and they, we have seen them a bunch. We also have the birth of the dragons themselves, so there are proto-dragons like you see in Northrend a lot, but now you also have the dragons themselves. Now we see how we get the, the dragons that we know and love so much with time and magic and earth and the emerald dream and all of the above so pretty cool stuff um i do kind of feel like neltharion and the black dragon flight become bad pretty strongly about that um well i don't know i'd say a better than 50 percent chance just based on a lot of the quests i've done over time uh, but we shall see and in some of these future episodes see you guys next time thank you as always for listening bye bye